the faithfulness of God. Many times we desire to put things in our own hands and let the consequences happen what may. But an inner voice tells us to wait on God, trust Him, confine in His timing. Time and time again in Scripture, we read about the faithfulness of God. He is called the faithful God. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. His attribute is faithfulness. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 7. Thus says the Lord the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhors, to the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and He has chosen you. Hosea chapter 11 verse 12. Even with the Holy One who is faithful. He is a faithful witness which we can trust when He states something to us. But as I said when He states something at times our carnality could pretend to be a voice of God, and even make fake promises which God never promised to us. Jeremiah chapter 42 verse 5. So they said to Jeremiah, Let the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. One thing which separates God from all the other gods in this pagan world, is that God cannot lie. Titus chapter 1 verse 2. In hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie. In this pagan world the false gods are known to be liars in matter of fact in Islam, the god of the Koran, is known as a deceiver and the best of it. Pickthal, Surah 354 And they the disbelievers schemed, and Allah schemed against them, and Allah is the best of schemers. When it comes to the Bible God doesn't deceive anyone, but men deceive in many respect deceive her or himself. When he or she goes against the will of God or expects things from God he did not promise. Jeremiah chapter 37 verse 9. Thus says the Lord, Do not deceive yourselves saying, The Chaldeans will surely depart from us, for they will not depart. Yes God can send a lying spirit, but it is only as judgment when a person is not accepting or is rebelling against the truth. 1 Kings chapter 22 verses 19 to 23. Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will persuade Ahab to go up, that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner, and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him, the Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore look. The Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 11 to 12. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In one occasion Jeremiah deceived himself, and he blamed God for it, but one just has to look at what God promised Jeremiah, and one could tell it wasn't God who deceived him but Jeremiah himself. Telling himself things was to be easy, as a prophet of God. When God told him the opposite. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 7 Niv you deceived me Lord, and I was deceived, you overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long, everyone mocks me. Did God not promise Jeremiah this was to happen? Yes he did, he said people was to rise against him, and even nations. Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 18 to 19 NKJV For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar, and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Do we not do the same to ourselves at times? Oh I prophesy to myself a great ministry, fame, money, success, a beautiful wife, husband and so on. But did God said no he did not. If it doesn't happen he is not to be blamed, but the prosperity gospel mindset. In his dealings and timing he is on track. God is faithful.
When he told Sarah at this time you will have a son, it was fulfill at the exact time, no sooner or later. Genesis chapter 18 verses 13 to 14. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Genesis chapter 21 verses 1 to 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Yes it took a while but it came at the Lord's timing, and not before or later. God timing is exact to what it needs to be. Also God by the mouth of Jeremiah told Judah she was to be in captivity in Babylon for seventy years, did it not came to pass as God said. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 10 NKJV For thus says the Lord, After seventy years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, and cause you to return to this place. Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 NKJV Now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and also put it in writing saying, Thus says Cyrus king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me. And he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is among you of all his people? May his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel, he is God, which is in Jerusalem. And whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, besides the freewill offerings for the house of God which is in Jerusalem. God is faithful in all his dealings and he only does what is right. When God gave a dream to Joseph that his brothers was to bow down to him, did it not happen as it was dreamed about? Genesis chapter 37 verses 5 to 10. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? Genesis chapter 42 verses 8 to 9. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them, and said to them, God is faithful and true to what he promises us, yes at times we have to wait, and it may not at time look as we want things to be. But we have great promises of his faithfulness in the scripture that if we love him, all things would work for our good in the end. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Even in the bad things people do to us, God is working it out for our good. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. There's an old saying that goes, trust the process. Yes faith trust is what we need, for we are called to walk by it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight.